when did you like, I, I think when, for me anyways, when I first got in the business, you kind of skip past the branding and you go, I just need to make some money here. And uh, I think Jeremy was saying it today, you show up with commission breath. <laughs> and so um, when did you like really start to look into branding and start to pay attention to it and branding yourself and creating that brand narrative like when did that start to become relevant for you from day one i kind of had to brand myself differently because i was like 22 and i looked like i was 15. <laughs> and so i had a real estate coach and he was really i mean he's the best mike ferry he was the top guy and, and he, he basically taught me how to make myself look 10, 15 years older. And so that was a form of branding, right? And so I was wearing a suit literally every day. I learned the scripts, and so I was so dialed in on exactly what I was saying. I looked the part, I spoke the part. I had friends that like knew me from whatever, the social scene or whatever, and the second we started talking real estate, it happened all the time, they're like, oh, I get it. Now I see how you sold 75 homes last year. Like, they were like, holy shit, this good. So it was a branding thing. It was like the second I was in real estate mode, right, I was always trying to brand myself. Um, so I'd say from the beginning in different ways, um, just always trying to brand yourself as an expert, brand yourself as somebody they could trust, things like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I love what you said earlier, and, and um, you talked about it briefly, but the experts are usually seen as the leaders who train other leaders. And so when you're branding yourself, that's how you want to brand yourself, is the leader that creates other leaders, right? At the end of the day, no one really wants to be a follower, right? We all want to be leaders. And so I feel like you've done a really good job um, of branding yourself like that and an amazing job. When we talked about this yesterday, too, we talked about, you know, building off your brand and who you are and creating other streams and revenues of income. When did you decide to start to build this coaching program? Like, because you do real estate, real estate's your main bread and butter. When did you decide to start to build this other program and create uh, another stream of revenue off your brand you'd already built? Yeah, I mean, it was literally within a couple of weeks of selling that big house. I was with a bunch of friends who we were hanging out. And I remember I was like, you guys, it was kind of like a meditation we were doing. And I was like, I'm done with real estate. And even the person that was guiding the meditation is like, uh, maybe sit on that for a little bit. You know? <laughs> I was like, I'm not quitting tomorrow, but like, I need to start looking. And so what I was doing is I was still working just as hard in real estate, but I was actively um, figuring out what was going to be next. You know, I was, I was hiring people that knew some ideas and I'd have an idea and I'd run with it. I remember I, my original idea was to do these adventure trips and I was going to get all these influencers. And I remember I was really good friends with Tim Ferriss's girlfriend. He was like one of the top influencers I would want to be a part of this. And so I was like, hit her up, like basically just to pick her brain, but really to put it in her ear that maybe Tim should come with us, you know? And, uh, and she was the one that was like, Jimmy, I gotta be honest. Like I know all these influencers that hang out with Tim all the time. None of them have time for this. None of them need this. She, and she asked me one question. She goes, who needs this? And that was the question I started pondering on. It's like, oh. And so by actively putting things out there, by taking action, I was calling people. I was trying to make it work. I got my answers. And it was about a two, two and a half year period from when I had my epiphany to when I actually launched the program. Nice. So you planned everything and... Yeah. yeah, and a lot of it I've figured out as I went. I mean, I'm still doing that a little yeah. bit, but sure. you know, it's that's the beauty of it. It's like it doesn't have to be perfect, and anytime something doesn't go perfect, I just tell the guys, I'm like, all right, what's the lesson? Sometimes life sucks. What do we do when life sucks? You know, like, and you can always just play with it. But I mean, that's kind of how it goes. Love it. Uh, I, I've worked with a lot of coaches. Every coach has a different modality or different strength in how they create transformation. You know, breath work has, and meditation and dynamic meditation has been so transformational for me. What has breath work and meditation done for you in your life? And, and what, like, because it's kind of that woo-woo shit, like, you know, men were like, just tell me what to do, I don't need any of that bullshit, like, what was your mindset before you came into that stuff, and how has that helped you in your life? Yeah, I mean, I was going to leave it out of my program originally, because I'm like, I don't know if people are going to think I'm crazy or whatever, I mean, you know, we do hoppy, we do, like I said, a cacao ceremony, where I brought this lady in from Austin, she's the top cacao woman in the world that markets herself as, at least, she's a good brander, because that's what I think she is. Um, <laughs> And, you know, she comes in, we do this dance ceremony with 50 guys dancing and, like, drinking hot chocolate, basically. And, like, next thing we know, one of the guys, but this stuff has its own magic way of, like, when the container's set, one of the guys in my group, he was one of the, like, toughest guys. He was a football player at BYU, and he's, he's just very, he was very shut off. This is about four months into our program, and we do this cacao ceremony. 
and then people get up and share. And he gets up, and he he was like the guy who's like, "Don't hug me, bro. I'm not I'm not gay." He'd say it all the time. It's just like, Dude, that's not actually gay, but whatever. Okay. Uh, but he had these weird insecurities all over the place, right? And um, but a good dude, and all of a sudden he gets up and he starts talking. He's never shared this, and he's like, "Yeah, my brother died when I was eight, and uh, he's like, nobody took care of me, and I've always blamed my parents because nobody was there for me." And he's like, he just starts bawling. He goes, "I just realized in this ceremony, like my mom couldn't even function. Like nobody was there. For, I've never thought of it this way. Like she couldn't even." And he calls it the mom, like right there, and um, and she's just bawling. You know, and she's like, "I've waited for this call for 20 years," you know, and. And right there, it's like, and he's now like the most outgoing guy in the group now. He just shed this shell of like this protection he felt he needed. And so like you start adding those things in and it doesn't take long away. We've had the breath work, the cookout. Every ceremony has these sacred moments. And so um, the guys now, they're like, what's next, dude? This stuff's, wow, like this stuff's crazy, like, but we love it, you know? So now they're, whatever I throw at them, they're like all in on it. But, um, but that's what it does. It just allows you to open up a space that's maybe been blocked or that you haven't been able to recognize something. And I think what happens is we have our subconscious is running the, the game a lot of times, but our ego is in place to protect us. So it's blocking these painful memories to help us function as humans. But when we can lo drop the ego, when we can find a container, whether it's you know plant medicine or um, you know breath work or cacao or whatever it is that can help you drop that ego, and all of a sudden your subconscious can feed you the information, then you get to look at it. And as an adult, you're going to be able to approach it much differently than you did in the moment that it happened. Yeah, love that. What questions do you guys have for Jimmy? Any questions? Right here. Uh, Jimmy, so I own a dog training business. Okay, that's my bread and butter. Cool. But I also coach men. And then my wife coaches women, and we coach couples together on coming into the covenant of God as a leader within their home, themselves, their marriage, their family, and in their workplace or their business. Okay? Um, what I struggle with, and the question I have for you is, you know, I've got a, I've got a clientele within the dog business, okay? And I'm growing the alpha leadership, right? Did you bring those clients over from your real estate or let them know, and, and should I be doing the same thing? Yeah, I mean, it's. I think that we live in a society. So, if you guys are familiar with Dan Fleischman? He's a close friend yep. of mine. We own multiple businesses together. He's an expert on this, but he talks about how um, essentially we're our own brands now. So, your brand isn't your dog business or your coaching business. Your brand is actually you. Correct. Right? And yeah. so, those people are attracted to you in one way or another. So, I can still sell my real estate clients, but I mean, a third of my program is other realtors, right? Like, because who followed me on Instagram? My program, my first group was full of two groups. People from Utah and realtors around the country, because it's the only people that knew who I was. And so, um, and because I only put it out through my Instagram, so my whole first group is realtors and people from Utah. And so, ultimately, your job is to be as well as you can, whatever you're trying to push, whatever you're trying to, to create. Um, that brand is you, though. It's not the dog business or the alpha business. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Love it. Any other questions? Right here. Well, let's go right here, and then we'll go right in the back with Brady. Hi, Jimmy. Um, thank you for sharing your story. It's an honor to hear you again. Um, so I, we talked a little bit last night, and I work with women and um, have an amazing community, but I want to make that community that much better. So what would be your number one piece of advice to help anyone who's looking to really facilitate and build community within sure. their business. Um, I think that, number, so for me, I just, I literally played it backwards. I'm like, what don't I like about masterminds? What don't I like about conferences? What don't I like about coaching groups, right? And then I eliminated all those things. And the number, number one thing was people weren't being real. Everything was surface. A lot of times, you know, I'd been to some of the biggest networking events in the world. I mean, I joined a coaching program or a mastermind group that was 100K a year. I mean, we were literally Jordan Belfort on my left and freaking, you know, Marcus Limonis on my right. Like it's, and to be honest, it just, everything stayed way too here. It, I mean, I was getting skills, but like the depth wasn't quite there. And then I started thinking about, well, what do me and my friends do differently? Why do we have so much depth to our friendships? And it was truly being seen and not being judged in that moment. And so the first thing I ever did in my program, the first day they all got together, I had all of us get in a big circle. And, uh, and I basically, first I went first. I got super vulnerable. I shared things that people were like, whoa, this is way vulnerable, right? Um, and they feel it, right? And because it's real. And so after I went, I had one of my best buddies come in and he shared something super vulnerable about an experience he had to get into integrity. 
and then I had another buddy come on and do the same thing. And these are guys that everyone kind of looks up to. And the one dude, he starts out his speech like this. He says, he says my name is so-and-so. I'm one of Jimmy's best friends. Um, I just need to tell you guys I've been um, convicted felon uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, it was a blue or a white collar crime. I'm facing up to 30 years in prison. I have not been sentenced yet. And I've never been happier in my entire life. Right? Every person in the room is like, all right, I'm ready to listen. And he tells a story. He was molested as a kid. He never loved himself. Did a lot of bad things because of that. Finally got into integrity. Talked to his wife. Boom, 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 boom. So then I open this circle up and I call it step into the circle. So I have all 50 guys in a circle. And I read a list of 40 questions. And if it applies to you, you take two steps into the circle and then you step back. I learned this from a lady named Catherine Hoke that works with prison inmates um, at Pelican Bay Prison. It was kind of a similar thing, a little bit different. And so the first questions are easy, right? Like, um, you know, if one of your if your parents divorced when you were young, step in the circle. Uh, if you ever had a sibling pass away, step in the circle. If you've ever had cancer, step in the circle. But then it was got a little bit more serious, right? Like, if you've ever been cheated on, step in the circle. Um, if you ever cheated on somebody, step in the circle. And every time there's 25, 25, whatever guys stepping in the circle, and you realize, I asked one question, I said, if, you've ever, if you feel alone often, please step in the circle. All but two people step in. And you start to realize, like, we all think we have these issues that are our own. And in that moment, I mean, there's not a dry eye, right? Then I asked, I was like, if you were sexually um, molested or, or assaulted as a kid, step in the circle. It's like 12 dudes. And all of a sudden, every single person in that room is like, whoa this is going to be different. And so from that day forward, we had a brotherhood. We had, um, and I give those guys a chance to share and a chance to talk about it. And every single person held that space so sacred. So to this day, I didn't show you guys the slides. I had six people go home from the first weekend, six, and get a tattoo of my logo somewhere on them. <laughs> Speaking of branding, right? Because they had a life-changing experience. And this was the, I've tried so many times to pinpoint, all right, I know all the magic that happened, but what was the thing? And what it was is they were seen and loved and not judged for the first time in their life. And you will never forget people that see you and love you in your worst. And so if you're able to create a container safe enough where people can truly be vulnerable. So the three pillars of my program are vulnerable, authentic, and in integrity. If you can create that, that's the magic. Love it. Thank you. Right there in the back. Or your mentor, and what are things that you're trying to work on personally for yourself as the leader of your group? Sure. Yeah, so I'm a big believer that you find the person that is where you want to be and you go hire them. Find a way to be in the room. Find a way to create value and service to them, right? So last year, my all time favorite book is The Way of the Superior Man. So the author of that is a guy named David Dita. So I hired him personally to coach me last year. Um, this year, I had an opportunity um, to get hired or to hire um, as my one on one coach is Ed Milet. And so Ed's personally coaching me this year and helping me. And so I literally just find the person, I mean, Ed's where I want to be, you know, and David understands these concepts better than I've ever met in my life. And so it's, I hire the literally best people I can and go learn from the best always. And so, you know, if you can't afford, by the way, to hire them, I mean, I barely could <laughs> afford my head, and uh, it's not cheap. But my point is, is you can read their books. You can hire them that way. You can buy their course for $1,000 online. Like, you can be mentored, but find the person that inspires you. Find the person that is where you want to be, that truly is. And, like, make sure they are, right? Like, Ed really is that guy. I know he is. David Dita is that guy. I've read their books. I've listened to them enough times. Because um, there's a lot of... The problem is society today, there's a lot of bullshit, there's a lot of noise, and so find the person that really is where you want to be, and go find a way to be in their life. Uh, the Way of the Superior Man, and it's literally the best book ever written. Don't listen to it on audio, it's a little bit different. Um, actually read it, but it's, a, it's an easy read. Team, how many times have I told you to read that book? It's a good one. Yes. Yep. Yeah, he taught me, I'll just give you one lesson he taught me when he was coaching me one-on-one -on -one that changed my life is... He talked to me talk to me about what it means to be present and to be present with a woman and because um, he talks a lot about the masculine and the feminine and all these things. And, and I had never truly understood this concept until he explained it. And he said, a woman knows if your mind's not there, if you're thinking about things, the way that you're seeing, the way that you're breathing. Like he would get so intense about it. And he said, it's like this. He's like, what sport did you play? I said, I play baseball. He said, okay, when a pitcher's throwing you a ball, if it, your entire focus, presence, is not exactly on what's going on at that pitch, are you going to be able to hit it? It's like, not at all. You literally have to be so dialed in. He goes, that's how you should be in a conversation with a woman. When she knows you're that 
dialed in. Your breathing will literally start matching. She won't even know what's happening. She just will know that she's never felt the presence of a man like that. And so it's hard. It's like it takes a lot of energy, right? But when I'm on a date, I'll do it. And it's like you can see the woman start to shift. It's actually really beautiful. But just little things like that that I would have never in a million years thought of that. I just thought I was being fun and loud or something in the day, you know, or whatever. But Love it. Yeah, so. Cool. Well, hey, man, I super appreciate you coming here. Can we give another round of applause, guys? You're going to hang out with us after? Yeah, I'll hang out with you. I got you.